Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll demonstrate some basic examples of using the Apex Data Parser package to convert simple CSV, JSON, XML, and XLSX data into rows and columns. The Apex Data Parser package makes it easy to display formatted data as rows and columns from SQL. You must have Apex installed in the database for this package to be available but you can use the package independently of Apex. The examples use four files, each of which are dumps of the data in the EMP table in the specified format. We have CSV data, with the first row being the column names. JSON data, where the results include an array of column definitions and an array of item data. We only care about the data in the results.items array. XML data, where each row tag represents a row of data, with the column names defined by the tags enclosing the column data. The rows are surrounded by a results tag. XLSX data, which is essentially the CSV data saved in a different format. There is a single worksheet called EMP sheet. We connect to a privileged user and create an Oracle directory object called tempdir, which points to the location on the database server that has the files. We make sure our test user has access to this directory object. All the examples will be run under the test user. We need a way to load the data from these files into a blob. There are a number of ways to do this, but we'll use this function called file to blob. It accepts the directory object name and file name as parameters and returns a blob with the file contents. It's not the focus of this video, so I'll move on, but just be aware this is how we make the data available to the Apex Data Parser package in these examples. Let's start with the CSV file. We'll mostly use the parse pipeline table function. This returns rows of data with the line number column then columns named col001 to col300, so there's a maximum of 300 columns in the data. We use the file to blob function to pass a blob to the p content parameter. We also pass in the file name as the p file name parameter. The type of data to load can be inferred from the file extension. There are other ways to identify the type of data, but we'll stick with the file name approach. We use the table operator so we can query the return data like a table. The select list includes the line number and the first eight columns. For CSV data, by default the first row contains the column names. Then we get the 14 rows of data we would expect, giving us a total of 15 rows. Now let's try the JSON file. It's similar to the CSV example, but we need to use the pRow selector parameter to show where the array of row data can be found. In this case, it's results.items. For JSON data, the column names aren't included in the output by default, so we use the addHeadersRow parameter to include them. The output is similar, but the column order is a little different than we might expect. The XML file example is similar to the JSON file example. This time we use results row as the row selector. The output is consistent with the CSV data, including the column order. For the XLSX file, if we're interested in the first worksheet, we can keep things simple and use it in the same way we did the CSV example. If there are multiple worksheets, we need to say which worksheet to load. The get xlsx worksheets function displays the worksheets. We pass in the blob value and we need the resulting sheet file name value. We use the sheet file name with the xlsx sheet name parameter. So now we can pick which worksheet to pass. Once again, the output is as we would expect. There's a lot more you can do with the Apex Data Parser package, but it's designed for simple data tables, so don't assume this is going to be perfect for parsing all your documents. 
Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.